Hello everyone, I wanted to get on here and start Magic Treehouse number four, Pirates at Noon, by Mary Pope Osborne. We're going to read chapters one through five today. Chapter one, Too Late. Jack stared out his bedroom window. The rain kept falling and falling. The TV said it would stop by noon, said Annie, his seven-year-old sister. It's already past noon, said Jack. But we have to go to the tree house, said Annie. I have a feeling the in-person will be there today. Jack pushed his glasses into place and took a deep breath. He wasn't sure he was ready to meet the in-person yet. The mysterious person who had put all the books in the magic tree house. Come on, said Annie. Jack sighed. Okay, he said. You get our raincoats and boots. I'll get the medallion and bookmark. Annie ran to get their rain gear. Jack reached into his drawer. He took out the medallion. It was gold. The letter M was grave, engraved on it. Then he took out the bookmark. It was made of blue leather. It had the same M on it. Both M's matched the M that was on the floor of the ma magic tree house. Jack put the medallion and bookmark into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and pencil. Jack liked to take notes about important things. I got our rain stuff, called Annie. Jack picked up his pack and went downstairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She was putting on her boots. Meet you outside, she said. Jack pulled on his raincoat and boots. Then he put on his backpack and joined her. The wind was blowing hard. Ready, set, go, shouted Annie. They kept their heads down and charged into the rainy wind. Soon, they were in the Frog Creek woods. Tree branches swayed, flinging rainwater everywhere. Yuck, said Annie. They splashed through the puddles until they came to the tallest oak tree in the woods. They looked up. Tucked between two branches was the treehouse. It looked dark and lonely against the stormy sky. Hanging from the treehouse was a rope ladder. It was blowing in the wind. Jack thought of all the books up there. He hoped they weren't getting wet. The in-person's been there, said Annie. Jack caught his breath. How can you tell, he said. I can feel it, she whispered. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. Inside the treehouse, it was chilly and damp. But the books were dry. They were all neatly stacked along the wall, just the way they had been the day before. Annie picked up a castle book on top of one stack. It had taken them to the time of the castles. Remember the night, she said. Jack nodded. He would never forget the night who had helped them. Annie put down the castle book. She picked up the next book on the stack. It was the dinosaur book that had taken them to, di the, to, to the time of the dinosaurs. Remember, she said. Jack nodded. He'd never forget the Tyrannodon who had saved him from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then Annie held up a book about ancient Egypt. Meow, she said. Jack smiled. The Egypt book had taken them to the time of pyramids. A black cat had come to the rescue there. And here's the book about home, Annie said. She held up the book with a picture of their hometown in it, Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Jack smiled again. The Pennsylvania book had brought them back home at the end of each of their adventures. Jack sighed. Okay, he still had two main questions. Who was the in-person who had put all the books here? And did the knight, the Tyrannodon, and the cat all know the in-person? Finally, Jack reached into his backpack. He took out the gold medallion and the leather bookmark. He placed them on the floor, right over the spot where the M glowed faintly in the wood. Rain blew into the treehouse. Brr, said Annie. It's not very cozy today. Jack agreed with her. It was too wet and cold. Look, Annie pointed to an open book lying in the corner. I don't remember a book being open. Me neither, said Jack. Annie picked up the book. She stared at the picture on the page. Wow, this place looks great. She showed the picture to Jack. He saw a sunny beach, a green, big green parrot sitting in a palm tree, and a ship sailing on the blue sea. Another gust of rainy wind blew into the treehouse. Annie pointed to the picture. I wish we were there instead of here, she said. Yeah, said Jack, but where is there? Too late, came a squawk. Jack and Annie turned quickly. Sitting on a branch outside the window ledge of the treehouse was a green parrot, exactly like the parrot in the picture. Too late, the parrot squawked again. 
A talking parrot, said Annie. Is your name Polly? Can I call you Polly? Suddenly, the wind started to whistle. Oh, no. Now we're in big trouble, said Jack. The wind blew harder. The leaves shook. The tree house started to spin. Faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. <laughs> Jack opened his eyes. Too late, squawked Polly. Chapter 2, The Bright Blue Sea. Jack felt hot sunlight streaming into the treehouse. He smelled salt water. He heard the sound of waves. He and Annie looked out the window. The treehouse was in a palm tree. Beyond was a bright blue sea. A tall sailing ship was on the horizon. It was just like the picture in the book. Too late, squawked Polly. Look, said Annie. Polly was flying in circles above the treehouse. Then she swooped down to the ocean. Come on, let's follow her. Let's go in the water, said Annie. She took off her raincoat and dropped it on the floor. Wait, we have to study the book first, said Jack. He started to reach for the book, but Annie grabbed it. You can read it on the beach, she said. Without even looking at the cover, she shoved the book into Jack's backpack. He sighed. Actually, the water did look wonderful. Okay, Jack said. He took off his raincoat too. Come on, Annie handed Jack his backpack then started down the ladder. Jack folded the raincoat and put it next to the stack of books. He put on his backpack. Then he went down the ladder. As soon as Annie hit the sand, she ran toward the ocean. Jack watched her wade into the water. She was still wearing her rain boots. Your boots, Annie, call Annie called Jack. She shrugged. They'll dry out. Jack took off his boots and socks. He put them beside his pack. Then he rolled up his jeans and ran across the hot sand into the waves. The water was warm and clear. Jack could see sh shells and tiny fishes. He shielded his eyes against the sun and peered out at the sea. The tall sailing ship seemed a bit closer. Where's Polly? said Annie. Jack glanced around. No sign of Polly. Not in the palm trees. Not on the sunlit sand. Not over the bright blue sea. When Jack looked out at the sea again, the ship seemed even closer. Now Jack could see its flag. As he stared at the ship's flag, a chill went through him. The flag was black, with a skull and crossbones. Oh, man, he breathed. He started out of the water. What's wrong, said Annie. She splashed after him. Jack ran to his backpack. Annie followed. He grabbed the book from his backpack. He looked at the cover. For the first time, he and Annie read the title of the book. Yikes, said Annie. Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack read aloud. Chapter 3. Three Men in a Boat. We've come to the time of pirates, Jack said. Pirates? squeaked Annie. Like a P in Peter Pan? Jack flipped to the picture that showed the parrot, the sea, and the ship. He read the caption under the picture. 300 years ago, pirates raided Spanish treasure ships in the Car Caribbean Sea. He grabbed his notebook and pencil from his pack. He wrote, Pirates in the Caribbean. He turned to the next page. There was a picture of a pirate flag. He read, the skull and crossbones flag was called the Jolly Roger. Let's go, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. I want to make a drawing of the flag. He propped the pirate book in the sand. He started drawing the Jolly Roger flag. Don't copy the picture in the book, said Annie. Look at the real thing. But Jack pushed his glasses into place and kept drawing. Jack, some pirates are getting into a rowboat, said Annie. Jack kept drawing. Jack, the boat's leaving the big ship, said Annie. What? Jack looked up. Look! Annie pointed. Jack looked. He saw the rowboat coming toward the shore. Run! said Annie. She started running toward the treehouse. Jack jumped up. His glasses fell off. Hurry! Annie called back to him. Jack went down on his knees. He felt for his glasses. Where were they? Jack saw something glinting in the sand. He reached for it. It was his glasses. He snatched them up. Then he threw his notebook and pencil into his pack. He put the pack on his back. He grabbed his boots and his socks, and he took off running. Hurry, they're coming! Annie was at the top of the rope ladder. Jack looked back at the sea. The pirates were closer to the shore. Suddenly, Jack saw the pirate book. In all the confusion, he had forgotten it. It was still propped in the sand. Oh, man, I forgot the book, he said. He dropped his socks and boots below the treehouse. Come on, Jack, Annie shouted. I'll be right back, Jack called. I've got to get the book. Jack, forget it! 
but Jack was already running toward the water. Jack grabbed the book. Come back, Annie shouted. Jack shoved the book into his backpack. Suddenly, a giant wave carried the rowboat right onto the beach. Run, Jack, shouted Annie. Three big pirates splashed onto the sand. They had knives in their teeth. They had pistols in their belts. They charged toward Jack. Run, Jack, run, cried Annie. Chapter 4, Vile Booty Jack started to run across the hot sand. He run, ran as fast as he could, but the pirates ran faster. Before Jack knew it, the biggest pirate had grabbed him. Jack struggled, but the pirate had huge, strong arms. He held on to Jack and laughed a mean, ugly laugh. He had a shaggy black beard. A patch covered one eye. Jack heard Annie yelling. He saw her coming down the rope ladder. Stay where you are, Jack shouted. But Annie kept coming. Leave him alone, you bully, she cried. The other two pirates laughed meanly. They were dirty and ragged. Annie charged up to the biggest pirate. Let him go, she said. She hit the pirate with her fist and kicked him. But the pirate just growled. Then he grabbed her too. And with his giant hands, he held Jack and Annie as if they were two kittens. No one escapes Captain Bones, he roared. His breath was terrible. Let go, Annie shouted into his face. But Captain Bones just smiled. All his teeth were black. Annie fell silent. Captain Bones laughed loudly. Then he turned to the other two. Find out what's in their house, you dogs, he said. Aye, aye, Captain, they answered, and they started up the ladder to the treehouse. What do you spy, Pinky? shouted Captain Bones. Books, Captain, Pinky shouted down. Ah, books, growled Captain Bones. Captain Bones, he spit on the sand. I want gold, you dogs. Dogs are nicer than you, said Annie. Shh, said Jack. What about you, Stinky? Captain Bones roared. Just books, Captain, shouted Stinky. Ah, books, said Captain Bones. He spit on the sand again. I hate books. Keep looking, dogs. Find me something good. Captain Bones grabbed Jack's backpack. What's in here, he said. Nothing, Jack quickly opened the pack. Just paper, a pencil, a book. Another book, roared Captain Bones. That's vile booty. A gleeful shriek pierced the air. Captain Bones froze. What's that, he shouted. Look, Captain, look. Pinky leaned out the treehouse window. He held the medallion. It glimmed, glimmered in the sunlight. Oh, brother, thought Jack. Throw it down, cried, cried Captain Bones. It's not yours, shouted Annie. Captain Bones dropped Jack and Annie. He caught the medallion as it fell. Gold, 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 he cried. Captain Bones threw back his head and laughed horribly. He grabbed two of his pistols. He shot them into the air. Pinky and Stinky howled like wolves. Chapter 5, The Kid's Treasure Jack and Annie watched in horror. The gold, greedy pirates seemed to have lost their minds. Jack nudged Annie. Together, they started to back slowly away from the pirates, toward the treehouse. Halt! Captain Bone shouted. He aimed his pens pistols at them. Not another step, lubers! Jack and Annie froze. Captain Bones grinned his black tooth grin. Tell old Bones where the rest is, he growled. Or prepare to meet thy doom. What, what rest? said Annie. The rest of the treasure, roared Captain Bones. I know it's on this island. I have a map. He reached into a belt pouch and pulled out a torn piece of paper. He waved it at Jack and Annie. Is that a treasure map? asked Jack. Aye, it's the map telling about kids' treasure. Which kids' treasure? Not us kids, said Annie. We don't know anything about a kids' treasure. Why don't you read the map, said Jack. You read it, Captain Bones shoved the map in Jack's face. Jack stared at the strange marks on the paper. What does that mean? asked Jack. What does what mean? asked Captain Bones. Those words. Jack pointed at the words at the bottom of the map. Well, it means... Captain Bones' good eye squinted at the writing. He frowned. He coughed. He rubbed his nose. Oh, leave him alone, Peaky growled at Jack. You know he can't read, said Stinky. Shut up, Captain Bones roared at his men. Jack and I can read, Annie piped up. Shh, said Jack. Captain, make him read the map, said Stinky. Captain Bones gave Jack and Annie a dark look. Read it, he growled. Then will you let us go, said Jack. The pirate squinted his good eye. Aye, Luber. When the treasure's in me hands, I'll let you go. Okay, said Jack. I'll read it to you. 
he looked at the map. It says, the gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye. Huh? Captain Bone scowled. What's that supposed to mean, Luber? Jack shrugged. Hang it. Take them back to the ship, shouted Captain Bones. They can rot there till they're ready to tell us how to find kid's treasure. Jack and Annie were tossed into the rowboat. Waves splashed the sides. The sky ahead was dark with thunderclouds. A strong wind had started to blow. Row, dogs, row, said Captain Bones. Pinky and Stinky began rowing toward the big ship. Look, Annie said to Jack. She pointed to shore. Polly the parrot was flying over the sand. She wants to help us, whispered Annie. Polly started to fly out over the waves, but the winds were too strong. She turned around and flew back to the island. And that is where we are going to stop today. I hope you guys join me again tomorrow to read chapter 6 through 10. Bye.